What I like the most, there are two things. First, um, it allowed me to keep teaching. So that's what I like to do. So um, I could, I can balance my family life, my kids' uh, schedules. Now they are not babies anymore, but, uh, you know, middle high school, they have, you know, different schedules. So I can choose my classes. I can set up, okay, these are the days that I can work and I can work up to this time. And uh, I can use these hours to prepare my classes, do the grading and all that. And, and then after that time, I'm free. And I'm free to work with the house and the kids, right? Uh, and, but um, it allows me to balance all that. Uh, because if I have to add the commuting time and all the extra curricular activities that teachers usually do at schools and meetings and special events and open houses, and th then you, I will have a lot less time to be with my family. So that, that's, that, I think it's perfect for me. But the fact that I can choose how many teach how many classes to teach um, after uh, a few years you will get to know the school some schools ask you to come back return the next year so you cannot keep like a regular schedule after a couple of years um, and you add more uh, classes according to your schedules I can as I said I can um, for example, I, the days I teach are the days that my kids are at home. They do partial homeschooling. So they work and uh, in between classes, I just keep an eye on, on them that they are on their work. And the days they go to school, they are not at home. Those are the days that I work and that I work and, and everything is quiet. So it's perfect. And, and I can, as I said, I can take care of the house, um, the, when the kids they have their activities, um, sports, well, I'm free because I managed to accumulate, uh, you know, those classes together. But at the same time, this is uh, uh, teaching for proximity makes things easier to uh, when you have children. Uh, but at the same time, when you professionally speaking, you can. Uh, you can do professional development at your own pace. Um, they are very good at proximity to tell you, okay, this is something new. Look at this website. There is the new things to do this way. And really you, you, or at least in my particular case, I was able to catch up with all these new technology and new uh, things um, probably faster than other uh, than the regular schools, because, you know, and, and, and sometimes it looks like overwhelming because uh, during the, the, the kickoff of the school's meetings in, in July, you have about 20 websites to check and says, I cannot do that. But little by little, oh, I remember someone mentioned about doing some videos. Okay, let's check this out. Um, so you're uh, really updated with technology. You you can you can make your your classes more lively, um, and that's a good thing. I mean, the kids like it. Uh, so I uh, so professionally speaking, I'm I'm happy with that. The thing is, they support you. You know, you, there's always someone. Uh, uh, or, or, or a group of people that uh, know how to do things and they're very good, knowledgeable about that. So you have people to uh, ask questions. Um, but now, the, the, I think that the most difficult thing for the teachers who are transitioning from in-person to virtual is like, okay, you have to forget about the copy machine okay that it's on the other side of the building oh i forgot to make the copies i have to send the kid to get the copies and you know go downstairs you have to forget about it because you have everything in your computer 
And, and once you play a little with, let's say, oh, I don't know how to create quizzes or how to make a Kahoot game. But after you allow yourself to practice and play uh, for a few minutes, then okay. And then you start creating resources that you can grab. If you're organized, you grab what you need. It's like cooking. You mix this and that ingredient and that the other, and you have a, a wonderful class. Um, it takes some time, okay? But um, again, if I think about, I tried one year because I was tempted to go back to the regular class by, uh, by school, by my children's school. So I went back, I taught for um, one year, but after a few months, I said, this is not working for me. I have to go back online um, because you have, you don't depend on, oh, the video doesn't work. Oh, they need a, a wire to connect so that I can play this movie. And someone else is using that CD or that movie and I cannot use it. Oh, and uh, in this class, we need a code to go to internet and use Kahoot. So there, uh, you know, there are a lot of things that um, if you think for a second, really teaching in the virtual classroom makes your life easier. Um, again, it's like cooking. I have all my ingredients in my computer. I mix this, that, um, and you can tailor the classes a lot easier. You don't depend on the copy machine or another student to give you the resources or anything. You can combine all that. Um, for me, so it's completely different. Um, I understand it may be challenging, uh, for most teachers who never taught virtual because they are not used to have all the ingredients available, all these tools ready to use. So it's like you have to change your mindset and that might take some time, but when you get into that, oh, it's so easy. It's so easy. And, and the kids like it. The, the, the students like to have, to be challenged, to have, uh, not a boring class, but some, to do something different. Um, you just drag your screen and show the video, and then you drag it back and bring a, a, a quizzes. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's completely different, okay? Some, most teachers who come from the traditional physical classroom say, oh, but I, I don't have the connection. I don't have the students in the class, um, but yeah, you can make a good you can make good connections and good relationships with uh, with the students. In, um, I remember at the beginning, uh, one of my students said, "Are you a real teacher or are you a, a, a video?" And I said, "No, I'm a real teacher. I'm a real person," and I think. Most teachers that we were forced because of the pandemic to move uh, to move uh, to teach uh, online, they have the same feeling. It's like I'm I'm not used to that to this. Okay, so are these kids there actually? <laughs> you know, um, so it's it, it's a process. It's a process. Uh, but um, the good thing is proximity. We, as I say, they have wonderful people. I don't know how they get all these resources, all these tools, um, but they, they, they throw them to you. You pick what you like, um, what works for you. They give you the training. You can, you have everybody, I don't know, I get five, eight emails every day. Okay, work, um, training hours, come and stop by if you have questions. So um you don't feel alone you're not uh isolated um sometimes if you relate to the regular class and a regular school um think how often your supervisor stops by your class almost never okay so but here you have people um that are kind of a specialist in their area all the time offering you help. So you just take it whenever 
you can, or just email the question, they will answer back. They're very good at that. They're very good at that. So um, again, it takes time for me, I think, not, not a long time, but it might take one year to adjust and, ad and adapt. But once you get organized, you know that you need to be organized, that you know you have some resources, some tools that you can use, incorporate, that you have someone to ask emergency help. I need help with this. I don't know how to do this. They will jump in, help you out. I think it's um, it's it's a natural process. And again, forget about commuting, the copy machine, uh, sharing resources uh, with, uh, you know, the, the only DVD of that particular movie that all the teachers want to use at the same time. So it's a it's a very different um, way. In my view, it allows me to um, do more teaching than paperwork and and you know work more with my students that than with all the other uh, people around the school, which is a good thing, at least for me. <laughs>